Slow. This is the uh, Lab Rat developer commentary. This is the uh, first, second, third, fourth, this is the fourth uh, OC commentary I ever did. I'm getting some extra voice cracks today. I'm pretty sure this is the fourth one. Um, I started this project immediately after finishing Lab Rat? No, immediately after I finished No Man's Land. So, I started this around like December-ish, and it is now August, so that is around nine months this took. Yippee. Uh, this lobby originally kind of spur of the moment and design i originally wanted this to be kind of like a lab and you walk around and then you go to different sections but to me it just didn't make sense at all uh this is just a poster saying for no man's land uh nothing to add here now this segment i'm not i'm not going to talk about this structure until the end because then it has more significance there um, Jack, or Pineade, he made the laser, uh, the laser, the lasers objects, he made those, and he made a desk chair, and he made the desk chair. Uh, Ace and Teb, they were just play testers, I need to just do this shit, oh my god, good fucking hair shit. And now, Melon, he made the first chapter's 10th level, which, uh, I'm gonna talk more about that once we get there, and, uh, Melon also made a lot of the sand terrain at the end, not all of it, but he did make a lot of it. Now, I, Javaleo did make, he actually did make, uh, he made a skeleton for the end, but, I just stole that from him, I asked for it and he gave it to me, so probably in later patches of this I'll probably add him as a uh, model maker, because he did make the skeleton. Uh, all of these images are taken from the levels, just uh, all the part one and the you know, loony guacamole code, that was all added in post, but all these pictures were taken uh, in-game footage. Uh, so let's start with this. There is a loading bar here. It isn't for shits and giggles. It is for a purpose. It does actually sync up everything. So I am going to mention, um, I, this is going to contain spoilers. It's going to spoil everything. So if you care about, I don't know, plot of this, it will completely get spoiled. Everything, what everything means will all be spoiled all of it. So what you just witnessed was uh, a cutscene. I know, shocker. Fucking your your mind is blown by me saying that. So it's a cutscene showing off the hole. The hole is a plot point that will get explained later on throughout the the game. Well, it's more of something that's brought up at the start and is really important for the ending. So that's just some foreshadowing. I'll explain more what the whole means once we get to that part. But for right now, I'm not going to explain it. Um, all these text, text, I wrote it all. Um, yeah, I wrote all the text. Um, I did originally want... When I did originally think of this, I did want uh, me voicing over, like voice acting, but um, when I started this, I knew I couldn't, so I definitely put a lot more effort into the text bubbles. Now, what you just heard here is technically kind of a bug, it, it's weird. So. In each puzzle, this is a, a box puzzle game, so 
when the boxes fall from the tube, they make a landing sound. And I couldn't find a way to stop that sound starting from the start of the game. Now, if you say, oh, Looney, just make it so the button, the audio button spawns after you get in, I just, how they're placed is they're placed near the bottom of the ground. So if I did do that and then I made the button uh, can collide true or so the box could interact with the button, then you would see the button, then you would see the audio part in the just floating. So I didn't do that. Uh, I guess I could have put the audio button in the ground. I didn't think about that until now. Probably not gonna implement that because I'm. <laughs> I already worked hard enough on this shit. So, all this graffiti here has been kind of. Uh, was very late in development. I realized the whole point of the. Well, not the whole point, but the whole game is you are a test subject and there's no. and there's, you know, other people been here. And something that a little, a small nitpick in Portal is you, Shell, are a, a test subject in a long line of test subjects. But there doesn't really seem to be any, I don't know, artifacts from other test subjects before you. Then the only real sign that people been there before you is, I don't know, how the facility, I'm talking Portal 1, is kind of like, there's nobody around, like, the fucking, the people are gone, so, and the, all the walls feel, are kind of faded out. That's the only real sign that there was really anyone else there. Wait, let me just check something. Okay, no. So, that's it. Um, all these vents were also added very late into development, same with the graffiti, uh, because my main focus was the level design and then putting all these decorations in last. But they were, these were, all these graffiti things, they were very fun to make. And if you notice is they don't really have a font to them. That's because I, what I did is I went to Paint 3D and I got the, I believe it's the spray tool. Uh, the spray can tool and then I just wrote out all of the graffiti with my mouser my my mouser my mouse so so it gives that kind of hand drawn like etched in kind of like a like a loony was here graffiti or something like someone would write there I kind of wanted to encapsulate that feeling of other people just putting their mark in the world uh, this uh, is a photon converter, and it is originally what the whole game was going to be about. The whole puzzle game was based off this one mechanic. Now, later on, uh, when I was making the other zones, I realized that this mechanic kind of loses its, I don't know, it doesn't have too much depth. So then I made the lasers and the teleporter. Now... Uh, you could obviously tell this game is very inspired by Portal. It's very, very similar to Portal. By You could draw parallels by the obvious, uh, you know, there's your company logo. There's, I immediately at the start, just a couple of minutes ago, I drew an inspiration from Portal saying about graffiti and shit like that. And this photon converter... It obviously looks like a it looks like a portal portal. So another thing, I also took the camera idea from Portal, kind of showing like oh you're being watched along those lines. So that's just another thing. Now oh yeah I already went in here. I'm a little goofy in nature. Now <laughs> this kills you. So the photon converter shows objects that are semi transparent and are and can kill you so how this works is let me go into edit mode oh i'm i'm silly in nature 
because I clicked the load part instead of... I'm, I'm sorry, lads. Okay, now let's get back to this again. So, what this is, is... Let me move this. Let me... Let me move this. Let me... <laughs> whatever. So... Let me move that. So, what these are, is they are pieces of... They're glass that have 0 0.99 transparency. Now, a funny thing is with glass, is when it looks at to anything else that has transparency in it, it makes that invisible. So, if I go to this, which has 0 0.02, it will, transparency, it will make it invisible once looking through the glass onto that object. Now, if you do 0 0.01 transparency, that, ooh, that draws the line, bucko, but 0 0.02, that's, that's, that's transparent enough for me, so that's how it goes. Now, when people were playtesting this, a lot of people were confused that you could even interact with this box. Like, when people were going in, they were just confused. Now, it did take, like, 15 seconds to realize oh i could push this but i'm like you should know instantaneously this is a pushable box so i made it so as soon as you jump down here the box drops down so that's something uh originally the layout of this room was different the this button over here was right here but then people didn't realize that all the button needs is the box to just go over it once and then it uh it works and then you don't need it to stay on so that's why i moved it over here so you're like okay box go on this and then i could i move it off to then go up here now originally i wanted to make it so the box had to be on the button to activate that's why it looks like a pressure plate so much because originally it was supposed to be a box pressure plate like portal but i couldn't get it working consistently like it would work if i would like put it on and then i'd wait like three years and then put it back on and then it would work and then i tried to get it so the doors would also work with the pressure plate mechanism and it just didn't work it i could get it to work if you wouldn't fuck with it at all but knowing how people would be they would obviously try and push the object the uh system to its limit and then it would break and i realized i couldn't have a puzzle system based on effectively the honor system for players so i realized i had to scrap it and change how it would work uh this is just an idea. I knew if I would make this looking through design, I had to make one of these rooms. Now, originally, Lab Rat was, well, technically there's two origins of this. Now, there's one a collaboration obby between me and a person named Zentef. Now, me and him kind of had a falling out, but that's not really too important to the story. But what matters is this was the same uh, portal a la, a, a la, a like design game. And I did get permission to uh, do a developer commentary thing on that. And I'll probably do that at the end. See, I'll check seeing if it would work or not, his obby. And then if there is, then I'll do further commentating on that. And if there isn't, then I'll just ask him for so make sure I could go in and then I'll make that separate video but for this uh, there was the Zen labrat thing and how it would work is since he had the plot I couldn't work on it when I wanted to and that kind of had a little bit of a I don't know friction between like I want to do on this and I thought it was just super slow so then I made my own obby and for the record, that isn't the reason why we fell out, f fell off as friends and shit. We just, like, stopped talking and shit like that. Um, so what I did is I made this kind of uh, cave dungeon type obby with the same, with this mechanic. Now, Zentif's version, 
doesn't have this glass mechanic. It just has pushing blocks and a very primitive button design. So remember, this is like when right before buttons, no, 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 right when push parts were added, right when push parts were added, that's when we made that version. So I made this cave design, this cave puzzle game, and that's in that cave puzzle game is where this mechanic stemmed from. And Zentif's version is where the theme of the, I don't know, lab came from. So, yeah. That's all kind of rambled on, but that's it there. Um, this is where I wanted to further flesh out the uh, photon converter. So, now if you look up here, here, oh, the door opened. And if you look over here, you could see the doors open. But, oh no. I'm box, box no high. Box no, I can't get high enough. And I need box to get up there. But if I move box over here earlier, the door closed. Hmm. So, now the starting text here states that it disintegrates, the photon converter disintegrates anything in its path. So, that means... The photon converter, the photon converter destroys everything, so it kills you and boxes. So it's further fleshing out the photon converter as a mechanic. So this is puzzle. Go here. Yippee! Then it further does more with this mechanic. Destroy shit. Now you bring it over here. Then you jump up to this box. And you push it right down here. Activates that door. Final door. And we are yippee. So now we go into the... So for the record, it, every time you enter into these, all it is, all these machines are, is just a checkpoint it's just a glorified checkpoint that looks cool now originally when originally thinking of the concept of this i wanted to make it so just like portal when you die the puzzle resets but then further thinking on it i realized that would be very hard to implement and kind of finicky and if there's a lot of button mechanics it could get very jumbled so at the very start i realized i wasn't going to do that and i wanted to make uh dying kind of a mechanic and at the start here at the start part of the first part of part one that doesn't get elaborated but in the second part of it there's one chamber that's just about that idea and in part three and part two that idea is way farther uh expanded on and i love the meta turn it takes uh it take is cool it, it's just pressing the restart character uh, and it becomes a mechanic of the game. I know it should be mentioning that when that chain, when that part of the game is relevant. But I just think it's really cool and a real out of uh, out of the box thinking. Ah 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 ah! Get it? Box box puzzle game. Laugh please. So this is just you push box onto box. Yippee. Uh, a lot of people did kind of struggle with this. I don't know if it's because la dumb or it's just hard. But, uh, yeah. Wait. Oh, I'm stupid. That's not what you do. You do this. This is how you stack the box. I originally, when I made this puzzle, I wanted to make it so you did that, but I realized it was too finicky. So this is what the thing is. Why did I... My brain thought was stupid. So now, you put in here... Boop. Resets. Then we put the box on top of the other box. And we are yippee. Now, originally, uh, this little thing was lower here. But then I realized you can't really control how the rotation of this box. So if it goes flat or uh, on its side. So I made sure, sure it's just high enough. So you can just... So it works fine. So there we go. Yippee! Now, 
I wanted to further expand the box stacking idea, so I thought, you know, what's what's taking that to another step? Two boxes instead of three boxes. Now I do admit this is probably one of the worst chambers because it's less. You already could tell what the solution is. It's more of just it's annoying to get the solution. So I do admit that is definitely uh, an L for game design there. So me bad. So let's knock this Jonathan over. Rata! Rata! Okay. Let's get you over here. <laughs> oh, uh, feel welcome to to skip this part because it's just gonna be me trying to get this. It is. I do admit it is kind of annoying to get right and this little part here when it, it was just hard to get it on so I put this little bumper here so it's easier to get the box on and we are we are epic fuck <laughs> I don't feel bad for skipping that okay so uh, the flying so originally the puzzle game didn't have flying at all but then i feel like if people wanted to skip i i feel like i shouldn't control what the player exactly wants to do if a part's too frustrating or something then they could fly and it is always your choice if you want to fly or not but if you fly you are i don't know I guess cheating. You're really just cheating yourself. So that's it. It's completely your choice if you want to. So yeah. So what we do, we do this shit. We go. Now, this chamber changed a lot from playtesting. There were a lot of times where if a box went to a certain area, it would just fucking break the the chamber and you would need flying so just for anyone playing this you don't need to fly you never need to fly it's just the flying there is there if you're bad that's it now the solution to this is a little wonky because originally what i wanted is you push it over this the small box over to then put the little the the big box on top of but then you could just do the other way around and it's uh easier wait uh we're wait not that i meant the easier option is to just do this to get it on top and uh when i realized this was a solution i just kind of like i was so far into it i didn't want to rework it so this chamber is 100% just for the idea of resetting yourself through the photon converter. So, you're like, so this little graffiti is like a guy struggling, like, I can't jump up. And this is the first level where you're supposed to die. So, you get up here, and now, second part, a uh, lore dump push this over here now the reason why this box is a different material is because so you could more easily identify which box came when because the solution of this puzzle is you just get this box over here push it underneath this box and then you destroy this box now originally i wanted to make i thought in my head my brain said okay you time it with the conveyor and then I realized there's no urgency that you need to time it with the conveyor. So the conveyor is kind of pointless, but I'm going to keep it there regardless. So now you have the box high enough, so you can take it over here and open the door. Now, this is the chamber that Melon built. I don't like this for a couple of reasons. One, it's just kind of like... I don't know. I don't know how to say unfocused. I, I, no, it's not. It's, it is focused, but it's just 
odd. It's the only time where a box is this irregularly shaped. And I had to add these parts here because sometimes when it falls down, it will just fucking break. So even though it's pretty goofy, it has to be there so the game doesn't fucking break. And the solution isn't even hard. It's just you go over here and you just push box on top of little one and then it goes down and then you go down and then whoa look at look at puzzle puzzle go wow and why the fuck didn't it work what what okay <laughs> that was weird and the reason why it's not uh chamber 10 is different isn't different is because he already made it and i just wanted to get work on different chambers so no i'm not going to change it but i do admit this is probably another bad chamber it, there's there's no puzzle <laughs> it's just block go down whoa so but yeah i'm not going to get rid of it uh, part two. So, once I made part two, I realized that the photon converter wasn't, like, a super good mechanic. It's just, it felt kind of shallow. It's just, all it is is you look around for where the, the, the fake things are. So, luckily, I deviated from it very quickly. So... These, these are the four main lasers. There is the red laser that just kills you, the blue laser that stops you, the yellow laser that destroys push parts, and the purple laser, which kills and stops you. And that mechanic, well, actually, all these lasers are directly taken from the Luscious Garden from Shattered Worlds. And I think I did mention in the, the, that commentary that I like the, the color-coded laser so much that I'm definitely going to use it in a later project, and I, uh, I guess I kept that promise. I'm pretty sure I said that. I think, uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure I did. And I did have a solution in my head where you do this, and then you go around here, but then I realized you could just walk through the laser, but the solution is still pretty much the same. And the whole point of this is so you could identify, you learn how this works. And everything is set up so you can easily tell what everything does. Probably the least easiest one to find out what it does is the purple one. But I like the red one because if you go too far in it, you die, which I think is great. I like the, the blue one because you would think, oh, I could go here around here I like that one its placement so I think it does a pretty good job introducing what they do and if you didn't realize what the blue one does in the first one you're going to definitely realize in the second chamber so this is probably this is my f I'm gonna say this is definitely my favorite chamber puzzle I this is definitely my favorite puzzle in the whole game because it is so it's so simple and it's so mwah, it's chef's kiss. So the whole crux, the whole puzzle is built around the checkpoints. And it weaponizes the checkpoints against you, which I, I think is a really cool idea. So most people would think, okay, I just go into the checkpoint without thinking of it. And I go over here. So I press the button. And they're like, okay, this is where I need to go. And they would go inside the checkpoint. So they'll go over here, not thinking about it, go into the checkpoint, activate the button. Then they would go around the other side and, uh-oh, I die. But I need to go over there. So all you do is you go to this checkpoint. You press the button and then you die. And then you, and then you go over here. And that's it. It's extremely simple, but a lot of people don't realize it because they so just 
they don't even consider these checkpoints a part of the puzzle, which I just think is really clever, and I really like the solution. And I think the best puzzles are the ones that they're super simple, but they uh, leave you guessing. And I just, I just loved how that puzzle came out. And another thing is, this little note right here only plays, it will only activate if you enter this one. This is the trap checkpoint. It will not go off if you don't fall for it. But if you fall for it, it will go off, which is a small detail. Now, something is, all the lasers ha play the sound effect of the, the they, they play this sound effect. All the lasers play that sound effect. But this is the only laser that doesn't play that sound effect because it will go off throughout the entire game. And you just like, like, what the fuck? What is, what is making this sound? And it actually left me like, for like five minutes. I'm like, like thinking like, I'm going schizo. What's happening? And then I go through the obvious and then I realize, oh, this, that, that makes sense. Now, this obby is, well, this obby, this puzzle is supposed to kind of further expand the idea of pushing it it's pretty simple and <laughs> it's kind of kind of whiplash in difficulty from this chamber and this chamber but i still like it and now i admit this laser is kind of pointless it is kind of a red herring and it doesn't really stop anything besides if you try and push the laser through here and it doesn't really even stop at that because you could just push the whole thing through it and then you could get it from the other side kind of pointless but it is what it is this is also expanding on the idea of pushing blocks but it does it in i think a way cooler way where you need a block to push another block like this. I think this is way neater. So then, you get it like this, and then, boop. Now, another thing I want to point out is this door actually doesn't have a proper mechanism like all the other systems. Let me get to them. So, all this really is, is it's just this button. It's just an activate button. So if you go to it again, it will close the door again. And the audio. So it should be kind of a one-time use, but it isn't. Actually, I guess... No, I guess that is right, I guess, because it is a player-activated button. Eh. I consider it laziness, but it actually does work. It. You could also say it works perfectly as intended. And eh, whatever. Uh, this one is me kind of desperately trying to integrate the photon converter as a mechanic again. And I think it shows it way more in Chamber 27. Oh, ew, 27. That was, that was a bad one. That was a real stinker. But it was very experimental, and I think it fucked up horribly. Now, this one, I like the idea of kind of a red herring as the main mechanic so i wanted you to feel like you can do the obby in a certain amount of time and originally you would be able to but this uh conveyor makes it so you definitely can't in time so it shows you definitely can't finish the obby in time within the was it eight seconds you have so you think oh, okay so your initial thought is, I beat the obby in that amount of time. And then with the conveyor, it's like, okay, there is no way I could do it. It's impossible. But then it further goes on, so then you just die from the photon converter and go back up here. Bruh. <laughs> this one, I like, I my original solution to the puzzle is... You're supposed to set up the boxes, the the box tower through a blue gate, but it just doesn't kind of work very well-ish. It's kind of finicky, and I don't like too much how it turned out. And all it really turns into is to you just push the box onto here, 
and then need be the tower. What the fuck? What? Why you do this? Why are you silly? Why are you like this? Why are you running? What the hell? Yeah, thank you. It's weird. Okay. Every time I did this, that, that never was a problem. Okay. Now this is chamber seven. Now, the whole idea of this is red herring. That was the idea of what I wanted for it. And there's all these this pointless shit here, and it's supposed to confuse you. And I like the idea originally, but it just it further thought is just like it's shit. It all it is the whole thing is you push block over here, and that's it. And I think red herring could be a cool idea for a chamber, and it already is. It's just chamber two. It does the concept of red herring way better. But yeah, we don't we don't talk about <laughs> part two's chamber seven. We don't talk about that level. Um, this is one where I like the idea of you're on the clock. That was a cool idea. And I want to point out that most of the falling sounds only go off for right underneath it. But I realized you could be on top and then push it off. So the falling sound is, way, is the biggest in the whole game where it could actually... The trigger for the falling sound is the biggest. Because you could do this. And it would be weird if you play... If the sound doesn't play for everywhere else. So, that's something. Now, this is another one of my favorite chambers. I love it. It's it's cool. I like this. So, what you do is the very first thing you have to do is you push the box, or the big box, over here to activate the laser. That's the very first thing you have to do. So, then you realize, okay, I need this box to be up here to get up here. Because I'm too short up here. So... And the only way to reset the box is this yellow uh, yellow laser. But it's too high up. So I, what you need to do is you need the box to be high enough to get it up there. Now, the solution to this, I think, is really cool. Now, technically, you can knock this over too. Wait, no, I don't think... No, you can't knock it over with this one. You need to knock it over with this one. So what you have to do is you need to knock over the box... And to knock over the box, you need to prop it up against something like this and do this. And I thought it was a really cool solution. So you just move it over here and like that. Now, I did need some playtesting. Originally in the first build of this, you could just move this box over here, the small box over here right under. And then you could reset the big box and then it'll just tip over. So that's why there's this little pad here. So, you can't do that. So now, you move this box right here, and push it up. Now, it's up here. It's now tall enough to get reset. And if anyone is watching the live stream right now and thinking, Oh, okay, why don't you just push this box over here to get up? higher they are the same level so it makes no difference from standing on this box and standing on the lasers uh this one i like the idea of you need a box to stop another box from resetting and i do think this has the problem with melon uh melons uh, uh part one chamber 10 where the solution is super, de I get not derivative is the word. It's just super straightforward. And when people played this, they thought it kind of broke. And I was like, oops a daisy. But I didn't have any fixes for what I could think with it. And I still like the concept of it. So this is kind of for what it is for right now. So part three. Part 3 is the teleporters, which is kind of ironic that it's the last mechanic introduced when the portals is 
what Portal, the Portals Portals is what inspired this game. So this is just a introduction chamber and if you noticed the first chamber to each part is always an introduction chamber. So in part one it shows immediately when you walk in you see that the wall behind the portal, the photon converter, is transparent and then you could realize oh I could walk through it and in part two you see all the lasers instantly and then you can see graffiti from other people writing what happened and all that so I just do this yippee oh, yippee there we go so this is also further elaborating on the idea of knocking over this is the last time the knocking over idea is introduced so now let me explain what you have to do what you have to do is you need to make a pillar of push parts over here you need to make a pillar of them so to make a pillar now originally what you'll probably think is to do this but if you do this it is it always knocks over and then it's just too short so we need it to be higher so how do we make it higher now you would think okay you do this but what problem of putting the bottom one in first well actually what you do it you do put the bottom one in first but when you get the second one up here try and get it up there's the respawn and it gets rid of it now originally the respawn one was right over the portal and it would just get destroyed instantly but then people would be confused like why did it disappear it's just gone so now you see it disappear because of the yellow one because most people don't look up so what you need to do is you get the small one over here go behind it and you knock it over again now let me ruh, ruh. Okay, this should, there we go. It's a little, a little hard, but you can get it. So now, you push it in like this. And now, do this. Now, for the record, some of you may notice that the push parts and the people uh, don't exactly go to the same spot. That's because if you put the teleports at the same spot, they just kind of just uh mangle together and then they just start flying everywhere and we'll just push the uh you'll just get all pushed around and it just won't work now this is the intentional solution but uh, originally this red laser wasn't here and you could just put the small box up here and then you could just jump to the next one and that's a uh, not the solution so i had to fix that now this is also playing on the idea of knocking over the crate but in a different way so now we use ourselves for knocking it over instead of a different way so now we get this over here and we knock this down here yippee and there we go And we put it right here, right here, and then we go through here, and there we go. Now, originally, uh, part three, uh, part three, chamber five and six were originally in part two, and it was this is the chambers where the resetting becomes a mechanic. But I thought introducing it in part two so early felt <clears throat> too hard it was it felt too hard for people to figure out and it was kind of mean now when people were play testing it there wasn't any of the the hints right now 
so there's none of these like it feels so natural there's none of the the this text saying the yeah so so all this lore text says is uh your bodies are able uh the cells are able to instantly kill themselves for cancer and that is actually something that uh human bodies do do it's just cancer cells don't realize that they're uh bad for your body but it is saying that since you are a superior human your body can easily detect the cancers and they instantly reset themselves reset wink wink look at that look at that reset reset themselves i, I don't think you get it i don't think you get that it's so subtle so it's just a subtle thing in that message saying reset to reset yourself and that's the puzzle so let me just show how it goes so you get on this and then you hop over here now that's the first part here so how most people would end up doing this is they do here they go down here put this over here they see the button then they instinctually Put the button right here and yippee and this box is stuck there is no way period no way possible for you to get this box out of here besides the intended solution it's a, literally impossible so if you think okay i could put the box underneath it at an angle no because you need the box over here to drop it so the box can't be in two places at once so this is where most people are stuck they have no clue what to do and to be frank it is hard to realize but then you reset that is the realization of the puzzle then you go back through here and now you could get the box out from there and over to here i forgot you have to do the box stacking i i for gore me bad uh so i'm gonna guess that most people are gonna skip this one because it's they just don't know what to do and if you do that then you're going to probably skip the rest of the other chambers because now the resetting is become the mechanic for that and i i love the resetting mechanic i think it's really cool so now we have to push this through here. Yep. Uh, now originally, this was just a portal and a come out, but the, what you have to do is you have to knock over this box so then you could then put it over here to then make a stack so you could get high enough. But how it would go is sometimes it would just fly out. It would just knock over no matter what. So, I then made this convoluted little machine to make sure that it couldn't happen. So, yeah. Now, I'm pretty sure this has been tried and true tested that you can't knock it over. So, now, like, what the hell? What do I do? How do I knock it over? And this goes back to the mechanic of uh, chamber four of using yourself to knock it over. So you go over here, then you reset yourself, and then you knock it over. And you just, just about have enough time to be able to get over there. Oh, oh me oh my, that is an issue. I've was not aware of that um okay i never had that as a problem before okay normally it comes out the other way i guess huh what what a coincidence i guess hmm. not coincidence just hmm. i'm just surprised about that i'm just gonna fix that right now uh there we go there we go that's that's fixed so now we push it over here and get it right here boop then we reset this block 
and it all goes back to resetting blocks to then put them on other blocks. So that's odd. There you go. So I wanted to make sure all the mechanics kind of go back to each other, and I feel like I got on this. I keep trying to add new things and changing up how uh, the mechanics interact and different things like that. So I like this one a lot. Let me just push the block. There we go, and there we go. Now this one, I like the idea of kind of just being fast enough to catch it. Originally, it was supposed to be you reset yourself. But then with this hole here, it's just easier to just jump into the hole and stop it like this. So, there you go. Mm -hmm. Now this one plays with the idea of motion with your teleport. So when playing with uh, tele the teleporters, I realized that you could the teleporters carry momentum, so I wanted to make that its own uh, chamber. Uh, the, I it, the idea of playing that as a puzzle element. And here we go. Shit. We don't talk about that. Yippee! So then we move it over here. Then we kill ourselves, now, and then, there we go. So, right here, this is kind of where we have uh, our endings. So, if right now, we go in here, we get, effectively, I guess the closest thing that Labra has to a, a bad ending. So, we go in here, let me drink some water, and I'll just let this cutscene play. So, and us, yep, so then, you could hug the wall, and, but you will die to the lasers if you go in there. And then we get pretty much the voluntary extinction ending. So, if we choose not to die, we can not do that. So all we do is a simple little puzzle with putting the box on top now I wanted to make it very now what a cool way of doing it is I make this just a normal puzzle but you would be able to do this kind of being like oh I cheating in it but I want more I want most of the people to genuinely easily find this as a solution and not it being super convoluted so I wanted to make it very easy to find out to, to put this together so that's why it's like this there you go so you put the boxes over here there we go and now get the box high enough to jump up and into the vent boom now part four and the and by the way those those chairs were the ones that uh Pine Aid made. So go in here. And it continues right off from part three. So I originally the vents were added because of this vent part in part four. Oh I didn't realize you could do that. I just kinda jumped up to the spur in a moment. Let me move that back up more so now that shouldn't play if you do that there we go so this was actually the very first obby i ever did where i used music sounds i don't hear the music sound part what that's weird there should be a music zone here oh, i guess i deleted it whatever it's supposed to kind of have like this empty drone sound just like what you're hearing now with the background but it being more distinct here that's weird so these elevators are kind of inspired from another project i did called uh runner it was supposed to be kind of like a mirror's edge type thing and i don't know if i s it's i believe it was my plot 10 i think but uh 
Plot 10 got basically took into nothing. Uh, I think I'll probably revert Plot 10. So if anyone wants to see what Runner was, they can. So, there's all that. I wanted, I'll explain the, these uh, green bars. So in most facilities, I guess, I'm, I'm, yeah, fuck it. Uh, just Black Mesa. I'm a big Valve fan, if you couldn't tell. Uh, in the kind of prelude part, there's all these bars that kind of show where to go. So these green bars are supposed to be like the offices and the yellow bars are for testing. So, yeah. Now, here's a little idea of uh, fucking testing out the movement for portals. And so this whole thing is you go through here and then you break the glass. That's cool. And the breaking glass idea was taken from the Zentef version of Labrat, and I wanted my own version of it here. And a nice little detail is that most people won't know, is you can actually break it from behind, and it'll still play the sound effect, and it really, and that small detail really does sell the feeling that you, the pushing it really does break it, which I love. I think it's great. It, it's the small things. It's the small things, man. So you go here, here, and then you could actually go back to this vent. Uh, what the hell? What the hell, boy? There we go. So, uh, the reason why this vent is so long, it's because you are physically traveling to the other side of the gap. So, yeah. Now, originally, this office was pitch black. It was supposed to be kind of like a janitor's closet type thing, and it was completely black, and no one can see it, because I wanted it to be kind of like a like a jump scare-ish type moment where you fall through the floor and shit. But when people would go through it, they would be confused, because from their perspective, they wouldn't be able to actually see anything, because it would be pure black. They would just fall down, and they'll go forward, and it's just still more black, and you can't really tell. You couldn't, you really weren't even able to tell what just happened. So, I put a light here, made it another office, and all that. So here is where the announcer guy that been talking to you over the intercom the whole time, those were the uh, little speech bubbles that would come from the ground. And here is another music zone here. So here's just different people writing what they feel about the guy, and here is some lore shit. There you go. Now a little small detail is if most people will just, I guess, just walk by him. But if you look over here, so all the angles where you could, so what I want, okay, so what I wanted with these music sounds is when you were able to see the body, you would hear the sound. So, you're not able to see the body from this angle, so you don't hear the music, but if you come from this angle, you hear the, the audio cue, which I, I think is cool. Um, now, if anyone noticed in the intro cinematic, is there is this graffiti, so kind of showing, and if you were able to see, is there wasn't this many uh, dead people here. So it kind of shows what each graffiti part, there was a huge passage of time. Now, originally when I thought of this uh, body pit conceptually, I wanted to make them parts, but I knew even at the very start, I wouldn't be able to because of part limit. So I knew I was gonna have to make the texture. I do think in the, f I do want in the future to redo this texture because it is kind of goofy but it is, it is what it is. And I just kind of have to work with it. And originally when I made the texture, it did loop properly, but since you could obviously tell these people are made in Obby Creator, when I would take the screenshot from a top-down view, it would be kind of wonky, and I, so I had to kind of crop it, and then it just kind of lost its perfect symmetry that I wanted. 
so it's a bummer but it I'll just have to live with it so this is the final part where the guy's just kind of saying his goodbyes saying you know this is all it's all up to you what happens with do so okay so what this speech monologue it's really a monologue what this monologue is stating is the whole subject the whole system uh, testing is to try and build the perfect person through uh, make intelligence so we could see from the other office is everything else from person is finished so there's different personalities you could see the different personalities forming throughout the text you could see the com uh, communication by the ability that they're able to write you could see the DNA biodiversity via how there's different types of people being made. You can see there's, you know, there are different ethnicities created and emotions via how, you know, different people, uh, I guess, what they say and all that. And the problem solving unit is this thing right here. So once there was enough people that finished it, that the system thought was. So, okay. So once enough people went to this and died to fill up the pit high enough that the pit's height is what determined once the system was finished. I don't think I explained that well enough, but I think I explained it okay enough to... I don't... Fucking, I need to stop rambling. <laughs> so, this final monologue states... If you press the button, no one else will exist. You will be the last human to ever be alive. Well, the last uh, advanced humanoid to ever exist. Because technically, you are a subhuman. Because you do not, you were created in lab. You do not have parents. You, do, you are fatherless. So you are technically subhuman, but in an advanced way. So it... I don't know what the term for that be, because subhuman's typically supposed to be you're worse than a person. So I don't know what above, above human. Dub, dub human. You are dub human. So, you are, so as a dub human, you have, you are smarter, more intelligent, smarter and more intelligent. You, you are basically better than everyone. So the idea is now you have the best judgment possible to judge if people should be able to, if people should live in this environment. So if you just walk up right now and leave the facility, you are saying that people should continue after this. So now other people will exist after you and start repopulating Earth, what's left of Earth. But if you press the button that I will in this situation now you are the last person who ever lived ever period so now after this you leave the facility now the reason why the staircase is so long is because I wanted it to be kind of like you think about the decision like did I make the right decision and if you think oh, okay I think people should I should be the last person I should go and press the button and once you press the button there you can't unchange it and another thing is it's kind of supposed to be kind of like a snake eater where you know it's so long so you could think about all the shit that happened earlier now here's another a nice little music zone where it plays the the sand sound effect which is nice wait actually i don't hear it that's weird oh wait i do hear it it's just really low but I think that's a nice touch. So now we have the ending for antinatalism. Now, what antinatalism means is the belief that other uh, birthing children is morally wrong because um, the child cannot give consent about existing. And uh, a lot of people would, when they hear that, they think, oh, it's stupid and blah, 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 blah. I think it's really interesting, but that's besides the point. And basically saying, uh, 
giving children, giving life without consent is wrong, and giving chill and bearing children is morally wrong. Now, that's the ending. Now, the music that plays is different depending on if you press the button or not. Now, I personally don't have a headcanon, like, a good or bad ending. Uh, if you ask me if you should press the button or not, I say you should press the button, but that is my, that, that is my two cents. So, if we go back to here, and so we go through this cutscene part, and if you just walk past, you just don't even press the button, you just go over here, and you don't press the button, then you get the one small, uh, one small step for man, huge leap for mankind, which is a reference to the moon landing from Neil Armstrong. And it plays a different song, which is called, uh, I think, Contact? So it kind of gives this eerie but optimistic feeling, which is what I wanted from this ending. So I do like both of these endings. All, really, the only difference is a text change, but I do think conceptually it is really cool. Now, I did pre-built this thing right here, where you could see how much the smoke effect is carrying the outlook of this, because if we just take away the smoke here, you could just see what this, how small this is and all that. So, without the smoke effect, you could see there's a huge difference in how this looks. So, now, right here, the, uh, this chamber here, this pod, I don't know what to call this, is the same one from the hub, the starting. So you could kind of, so it shows a passage of time, because in the hub one, there isn't all the sand behind it, and all the sand around it, and seeping into it. So it shows there was a huge passage of time, and time is a huge element in the story. So now, let me try and get to show off Zen's lab rat. I believe it's Sentif 7? See if I'm right. Oh, I'm wrong. This is fake news. So we, children, we're gonna fucking wait to find this. Actually, no, I'm just gonna cut to it. Actually, wait, no, I can't cut in YouTube editor. So you're just gonna have to wait. Uh, sorry. Um, uh, I'll probably put in, uh, like a, in the description or something, or like a time span, so you can skip this part till I get it. Um, so have fun waiting till I find the correct plot. Ugh, goddamn. Uh,. I got the I got this Burger King hat in my house, not in my house, in my uh, in my room. I stole it from my little brother, like he was just eating, and I just kind of just okay. I didn't just steal it off his head, but it was just sitting there when no one was looking, so I just kind of took it. And I'm gonna I won't lie. Sometimes when I'm bored, I just put on the Burger King hat for shits and giggles. Here it is. That was enough of me stalling. Okay, here is there it is. Okay. So this was made right when, so probably late 2020, and oh, I made this, I made this camera, and some people say my building is bad. Zooey mama, zooey mama. I I came a long, I came a fucking long ass way. <laughs> uh, I also made this this model here, going oh, god damn, and I. I kind of think it's funny that my people design is still, uh, the same. It, 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 like, it's, you could still tell it's my person design. And here's the portal radio. God damn! Oh! Oh, Lord! Oh, oh, god damn! Whoa! Whoa, god damn! Yeah. So, that was, a uh, that was also made by me. I, uh, ooh, ooh. Ooh wee. 
So, uh, I think I, I made a lot of this. Uh, most of the, oh yeah, you don't go through there. You go through the, oh my god. Ooh. Ooh. Go through this window. You go through this window. There we go. And I know I made a lot of things. I know I didn't make this chamber. Uh, I know Zen made this and the images. I know he made that. And here, look at the look at the box. Whoa, what a chamber! So I'll play this through and I'll explain how everything works. So this is before this is pre bun. So all this is they they're just fade parts. It's just a bunch of fade parts jammed in, and hopes that and you hope that you press all of them to work. So now a lot of these aren't really puzzles; they're just box shit. Like this isn't really a puzzle here. You just kind of just push the box around. And I will say this: uh, part one, chamber two, suffers from that issue as well. But. Uh, I don't think it's, a, it's too egregious because it's very short. And yeah, this one, this one's annoying. Even when we made this, uh, even when they, we made this, uh, we all agreed that this part wasn't fun. It's just annoying. No one likes this. And I made a very distinct choice. I I was very uh, straightforward when I was making lab rat that I didn't want to make a part where you stand on a rolling ball I very very much tried to stay away from doing that so okay it's not as hard as I remember damn I was just bad at obbies but yeah now this uh, chamber three when push parts was just added Zen was just making this and I saw we were friends at the time, and I just saw him making this, and I'm like, yo, what? I want to help you, this is cool, what if we make this, uh, like, it's whole obby, and he was like, okay, so I just saw him making it all by himself, and I thought it was really cool, and I said, yo, what if we just make this, it's own obby and shit, so, yeah, so this is technically, this little chamber right here is what originated lab rat. Con completely. Oh, 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 oh. Damn, bro. I did my gaming chair is too good. How did I just fly over that pit? So, this chamber was. I think it was completely made by me. I think. I. This could be fake news. But I know Zen added this part, which is supposed to be like. It's like. It's like the Ratman from Portal. Whoa! Yep. So, all this is, there's, this, I admit, this Zen uh, version of Lab Rat kind of suffers from no actual puzzle. It's just, there's no thinking. It's just, you grab thing and you put it where the only other place it could go. And it is, I admit, it's pretty shit. We don't talk about that. It's pretty shit puzzle design. And, hey, I could say it's shit, because I made it too. <laughs> there we go. Ooh, look at that. And for the record, you do have to fucking smash your face into that. And it won't work otherwise. And I know for a fact, I completely made this one. I made this one all on my own. And you can see there's only one other thing you could do and you go in here and look the look at that whoa look at that portal god damn so you go in here boom now this puzzle i was very very proud of this at the time i thought it was so fucking cool and this puzzle is literally just uh coincidentally also puzzle five of lab rat where it's the same concept, but uh, I, it's not awful. <laughs> uh, this one, I think it's just kind of weird and bad and kind of gross. But it's conceptually the same puzzle. So what you have to do here is you just go in here. Whoa, look at that. Look at that. Whoa, whoa. And actually, 
you need to go in here. You put the box in the where the box spawns from, and if you think about it, then if you put it where the box spawns from, then where does this box? How does that box get into here? Don't think about it. Ding ding. Just <laughs> smile. Just don't think about it. And then look. Now the box is in there too. And then you open the box, and the boxes are pre-stacked. And this pillar was here because sometimes it'll just fall over. And I thought I was so happy when I made this. I was like, whoa, look at that puzzle. Whoa, whoa. And it's it's just bad. And this part literally can just soft lock you. You're just soft locked. You're just soft locked. <laughs> You're just soft locked. And like, I knew about it at the time, and I was like, eh. Who's dumb enough to fall into that? And I just didn't, <laughs> I didn't do anything about it. And there's no there's no puzzle here. It's just you put the box in there. And it goes around. That's it. And for the record, all it is is just these conveyors. <laughs> it's, just, it's so bad. And all it is is you just put the box down here. So you activate this. And you need this box to get out. It, it's so bad. I... It makes me ruh. Now this, this was a really cool moment. And this was, uh, in sp this part is what inspired the glass breaking in, uh, part four. So I originally, when making Lab Rat, I wanted kind of this grandiose part where something would break the glass or something. And I originally wanted to make this big crate, this big mental mental metal uh, cargo crate that falls down and crashes this window panel but uh, to me I just felt weird didn't really make too much sense and all that so I didn't go for it so we had this instead well not this instead but in part four is what made I, I fucked it up oh my god this is wait let me yeah and it's so weird because it doesn't even make sense. Oh, okay. There's something holding it up. I forgot. And then should what? S oh, smash my face! There we go. There we go. We got it open. We got it open, lads. No way. And at the time, we thought the the breaking open the glass was so fucking cool. And I won't lie, it is it is still a cool moment. I still like it. It's why I stole it and put it in part four of Lab Rat, actual Lab Rat. So this part, we're thinking like, okay, how do we add some challenge in here? So we add uh, slipperiness for no no reason. I d oh wait, no no no, it's not slipperiness. The slipperiness didn't exist. It's this bo this box is made out of ice, and that's the only way that something could slip around. In the old days, or the material below it was ice, I think, and then I'd put a bush bar on it. I don't know if that's fake news or not. It might be. So this maze was completely made by Zen. Cough, cough. SMH. All the bad parts are made by Zen. I only made the good parts. Honestly, can't can't believe it. Can't believe it for real. So go over here. Get the box. Smash your fucking face in. Then, I believe... Do we put the box over here? I don't remember. No, we don't. <laughs> no, no, we... No, we has not. Get the box over here. Because all I remember is you're supposed to get the boxes stacked up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you get the boxes. You push them. Uh, it's so fucking bright. Holy shit. I... I knew it was already bright, I just didn't really, didn't sink in that it's so fucking bright yet. Okay, that's what it is. We need to push this up for something. I don't know why. Oh, wait, I think we need another box or something. Also, let me just look. Oh, look at look at it. It's like Doug, Doug Ratman, Doug, Doug Dig Dome from the portal. Whoa, it's like guy crazy. And for the record, if anyone was thinking like, oh, did we have an idea of like, story-wise or something, uh, me and Zen didn't really come up with anything, all we like, we thought in our heads was, like, something, something GLaDOS, and that's it. <laughs> I'm not even joking. Uh, 
so we have push this over here oh wait I think pushing that box is important that putting that pushing that button is important because of the door I think then opens or something I honest to god I don't even know why this is important what does this do okay this releases a box for this part okay that's why it's important okay so now we just do this, and it's super fucking tedious, and it goes, rah, 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 rah. There we go, we got it. Let's go. Fuck, let's go. We got it. Now, this puzzle was also made by me. SMH, it's so good. I'm so glad I made it. Wow, wow. Uh, I think, yeah, there is a teleport part. That was a little, little thingy. I made this one. Uh, it's also pretty bad. There's, it's too, it suffers from the same issue mostly all the other puzzles uh, have with that. They're just too straightforward. The only puzzle that I don't think suffers that issue too much, uh, okay, it still suffers from it, but not as much as Chamber 5, but it's still bad regardless. Now, this is the last one. This is the last chamber that we finished or made. And now if you, rah, now if we go in here, it just says the ending, like, you win, yippee! Now, while at the time, before I effectively left the project, I made this part. And I made, I made, I think, everything here. Literally everything I made here. So this little computer here, this section part I made. And you could obviously tell the similar similarities between that, you know, I made Labra and all this shit with this part. So after you made, after you went, so what would have happened is after you fucking did that part, you would get put into here somehow. And I don't remember the exact. Okay, yeah, you come through here. That's what happens. You come through here, then you would, I think, yeah, you jump up through here, and here, here's how it goes. There, yeah, and then, oh, dude, those fly, those fries are actually so good. They're genuinely so good. Now, you go through here, and it's just tedious. I don't know why I made this part. Oh, well, I know why I made this part, but God. Oh my God. Ugh. Ugh. Uh, what? Wait, what the fuck killed me? Wait, what killed me? Wait, no, I died to the fan. Oh my god, okay. Now, this is a part I thought was cool, is I added the, the ceiling higher. So, okay, so you can see right now it's transparent. That's because in first person it looks more like you're actually crawling through it, which I thought was kind of cool at the time. We have another maze, and holy shit, I hate mazes. It was game design. Cough, cough. What the hell is... <laughs> what is a uh, fucking... Can't think of... Why, why can't I say its name? Uh, from... Uh, Adventure Forward 1. Uh, why can't... Feral Falls. Cough, cough. I never made a, a maze-like thing. And cough, cough. I never made a maze-like thing for... No Man's Land Part 5. I, even when I made No Man's Land Part 5, I hated mazes. And I kind of hated dark mazes, but I thought they were just too cool. So I kept them in anyway. So, this is this is everything. Uh, everything Lab Rat related. No stone unturned. That's it. Uh, uh, bye.